Welcome back to Motor Archery. The question uh, about knocking points on a horse bow. Do you need one? Yes or no? And uh, what difference would it make if you have one? So first of all, many, so I call them a horse bows again, have no knocking point. So when you look at the ancient uh, drawings and stuff like this, most bows or many bows had a knocking point mostly out of twine. So to have the orientation set. But what happens is when you look at this bow shot by many and you see these scratches are all over the place. So that means they were holding the bow all over the place. And that's why as long as you don't have your point where you hold the bow. I mean, there is a small arrow pass, you would see it. When you hold your bow always in the same way and always knock in the same way, then it can make sense. And it makes sense to bring a knocking point on it. As long as you don't know how to hold your bow here, doesn't make sense because imagine I have here a bow, Raptor. There's a knocking point. See, this knocking point is set properly. Now, if I would change now the position how I hold the bow and hold the bow like this, you see, then it looks weird, or I hold the bow like this, see, and it looks weird again. So that's why, first thing, always tighten the tips and second thing always know exactly and always repeat the same position where you hold your bow that you have always the same position for the arrow then a knocking point makes sense so what do you need to care about the knocking point on a horse bow when you put it too low you will get this one here you see that scratch on your fingers it will scratch with the feathers over your finger. So that's why you want to have the knocking point a little higher. And I'll show you now in this example. So look, this would be right angle, see that? Then you add the shaft diameter and then you still have roughly half an inch or something where you go even higher, see? And this is now the position, how the arrow is aligned. Of course, it looks a little weird and out of place. And now you have here a longer string part than here. That's why asymmetrical bows, in my opinion, are very beneficial, but we get to this because soon I get the crabby bow as a personal made version, asymmetrical. And then you see the benefits of it, why asymmetrical makes sense and made sense in ancient times, they did it like this. So the arrow is quite high, as you see, but it's necessary that you first of all start scratching your fingers and second of all that you line it up properly. So this is the only thing you have to worry about. So whatever bow you have, let's say I shoot now this one and I want to place a knocking point on it. First of all, I need to shoot a few times at the string sets and then I need to shoot a few times that I see where is the major scratch on my bow and then I see it. Okay. It's here. So here is the most damage on my bow. And I go back right angle and then I go roughly half an inch up and then I'm done. And then I put my knocking point depending. We put the knocking point above. Of course, others put the knocking point underneath. We put it in above. So when I knock, I knock it down, slide up until I have the knocking point and I'm good to go. But of course, what you see, the shorter the bow, the weirder it looks. You see the angle of the arrow? This would be the right angle, which you would think you should shoot. And here already, because it's a symmetrical bow, this part of the string is very long. This part of the string is already very short. And I shorten it even more because I go up with my arrow. But it's necessary to do so. I think you lose a little of efficiency in a symmetrical build bow. That's why for me an asymmetrical bow makes sense. Now I simply show you arrow flights. I put the arrow straight and above and then you see from the side if there's a difference or not. I have no idea. I'm surprised by myself, but I will wear a glove. So now I hope you see the flight of the arrow. I knock the arrow in a complete right angle. You see I have here my arrow pass and I line the arrow completely straight. Now let's see what the arrow will do. You saw that? I do it again. One more time. And now I knock a little higher. This is what how I would knock this arrow. So 
So I hope you saw a difference. Now we shoot the crappy bow. I knock first right angle. And now above, how I would knock if I would shoot this bow. I try to hold the bow as still as possible. I knock now straight again. The Raptor, I knock one arrow straight, you see that? Right angle. Now I knock on the knocking point. And one more time straight or underneath. I knock now underneath, let's see what will happen. Other than I scratch my hand. I'm not sure if you saw a difference in flying. So is it not beneficial to have a knocking point? I think yes. The thing is when you do fast shooting with a knocking point, you always need to find it. In this way, I simply knock, draw and shoot and it works for me that I can shoot fast without having a knocking point. I don't have to think about that. See, I don't have to slide up and down, I simply knock and you get the feeling for it, it's part of the instinctive or intuitive process. No problem at all. See, I simply knock and I can shoot easy. So, when I have a knocking point and do fast shooting, I, while I knock, I slide up that I end up at the knocking point. Or it was like this, see, it's a little more movement, but you get used to it very quickly. So, knocking point on horse bows, yes, but first know where you hold the bow that you always have the same position of the arrow. Then you can place a knocking point, as I said, finger width higher. Takes a little practice, but you get there. That's all for today. Thank you very much for watching. Catch you in the next one.